Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sew Sew Lounge. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a super easy fleecy blanket. Now, these are super basic. Um, you know, you may be thinking like, well, it's fleece, it's not gonna ravel. Why do I have to make a blanket? It's just a way to finish the edges so that it looks nice. It's also going to be a great way to practice sewing a zigzag stitch with minimal complication. And um, it'll just get you used to using your machine in the zigzag stitch. And it's a super easy way to just have a, a blanket. You can make them for kids, you can make them for your pets, you can make them for friends as gifts. Um, the main difference is going to be the length. So fleece as a standard is about 60 inches wide. This is blizzard fleece from Joann's and it's 60 inches wide. So once you open that up, that's a pretty good width for either adults, children, or pets. So the difference is going to be how long you make it. So I am actually going to be making a kid's blanket. I'm working on this for a friend of mine. And um, so with children, it's a yard and a half. So that gives you a really nice sized kind of blanket. Um, with adults, you could easily do two yards. Um, if it's somebody who's a little bit taller. And then for pets, you could probably do a yard or less depending on your pet size. Honey's a little bit on the big side, so I'd probably go for a yard with her. But if I was making one for Clementine, probably go with a half yard instead. So it's a super easy project. It will not take you long to do. And like I said, it's a really good way to just practice sewing a zigzag stitch. And you're gonna be sewing down the length of it and then across both ends. And it just finishes the blanket. So it's nice so you could give it as a gift if you wanted to and you didn't decide to keep it for yourself. Tools that you're gonna need are just some basic shears, scissors, um, measuring device of some sort, and some pins. To get started, we are going to trim off this selvage edge. Um, on one side, you can't really see it because it looks a lot like the actual fabric itself, but on the other side, it's got like all the Joann's information. So it says, you know, made in Hudson, Ohio, exclusively for Joann's, and that does not look nice. So even though we're gonna be folding that to the back side of the blanket, we just wanna cut that off. So that's gonna be the first step is to cut that off. To do that, we're just going to line up our scissors along this edge here where the print ends. And super easy. Clementine's coming to check it out because you know, she loves her some fleece. So we're just gonna start by cutting along this edge. Let's go in for a closer look. So I've got my fabric laid out on my table and this is how I'm cutting. I'm just cutting along this edge um, to get rid of this ugly white part. You wouldn't technically have to, but it's just gonna make your blanket look a lot nicer and um, finished. So if you do wanna gift it, it's just it's gonna just be nicer in the long run. So just follow along that edge and just cut on top of that line. So you don't wanna have any of the white from this over on your fabric. So just double check, zoom out a little bit. Oops, that was the wrong way. There we go. So you can just see that like, you just want it to be as straight as possible. So keep that line as straight as possible. And then we're just gonna go down and cut along this to just get rid of this ugly selvage over here. And if it's kind of wrinkled, you can press it before to just make it a little bit easier to cut, but you don't have to. And as usual, before I have started this project, I have washed and dried my fleece just because I don't know where it's been and I wanted to get any kind of sizing or anything out. It may have been sitting at Joann's for a while, so it might be a little dusty as well. Just get rid of all of that. And I'm probably gonna have to wash it again because Clementine has decided to come and hang out with us today. So just finish cutting that. And then when you go to the other side, I'm gonna stop that for a sec so I can show you all this other side. The other side is going to be kind of a more ridged. It's, it's a little bit easier to see because it is the same color. So you wanna cut off this piece here. That isn't the fuzzy part. It's gonna be just kind of where the fabric was woven and where it was held. So pretty much the exact same thing on the other side. You're just gonna be cutting along the edge of the fabric. So you just have this nice fuzzy plus edge and not this yucky looking edge that is feels like a different fabric even though it's not, it's just the selvage. So go through, cut off both of those sides, and then we will move on to the next step. So 
So once you've got your selvages cut off, the next thing you wanna do is figure out which side of your fabric is the right side. Now you may be looking at this going, Tony, they, they look pretty much exactly the same on both sides, and they do, but there's a way to tell which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side. When you look at the way this fabric was printed, it is definitely printed from one side and then it bleeds through to the other side. So when you flip it to the wrong side, the bugs look just slightly blurry compared to the ones on the front. So if you just turn it over, you can look at it and say like, okay, they look a little bit sharper on the edges of this side, and they're a little bit fuzzier on the back side. And that's just part of the dyeing process, but because you are making a blanket, and ideally for someone else, um, you want it to look nice. So the reason we need to know this is because we are going to fold the sides down 5 eighths of an inch towards the back because we want the front of the blanket to be nice. We'll have the little folded edges. And Clementine is loving her some fleece. So let's move over. Okay, so we're gonna be folding these edges towards the back side, and then we're gonna be stitching from the back and finishing the corners from the back. So that's why we need to know the right side from the back side or the front side from the back side, and that's an easy way to do it. So now we're gonna, Clementine, like I said, she's, what am I gonna do? Um, we're gonna fold under 5 eighths of an inch. So let's go in for a closer look. All right, so before we go into the folding, I'm just gonna show you a close up of right side versus wrong side. So this is the right side of my fabric. As you can see how, let me focus on a little bit, there we go. How the bug is gonna have a little bit of a sharper edge on the outside. And then if you flip it to the wrong side, you can see how it's not quite as sharp. So it's kind of a little bit more blurred. It's definitely more blurred on the bottom. And um, the flowers are a lot, not quite as bright pink. So they're more faded than if you go from the front side where you can see them a lot clearer. So we are going to be folding towards this wrong side. And we're gonna start at the long sides first. And we want to measure 5 eighths of an inch. So you can get your um, seam gauge. I have it marked to 5 eighths. And then I'm just gonna line up this edge with the edge of my fabric. So it's pretty basic. I'm gonna go like that. Get it lined up. And then I'm gonna stick in a pin. Now I'm gonna be sewing with this side edge lined up on my sewing machine on the marking. We're gonna sew it at half an inch. And so I'm gonna put my pins going out to the outside so that they're easier to pull out. And you can start from the top of your fabric or however you want, I just happened to grab it this way. So just go down the side of your fabric and you want to make sure that it stays at 5 eighths of an inch. And the reason we're folding at 5 eighths of an inch but sewing at half an inch is because we want to make sure that we catch this edge in our zigzag stitch. So I've tested this out. This is the best way to do it is to fold at 5 eighths and sew it a half. And it has a really nice finish so it'll look good. So just continue marking down the sides. Um, and if it gets a little off, you just move it back over. And you can use as many pens as you want. I'm, I'm spacing these out a little bit Fleece is pretty um, forgiving, so um, you don't need to totally do it every inch, but every, I think it's about every four or five inches I'm putting in a pin, um, just making sure everything's staying lined up so that it'll be easier to sew once we get to that point. And once you've done one side, then we're gonna go to the other side and repeat the process. Now we're only doing the long sides. Once we sew them, then we will come back and fold and pin the top and bottom edges. All right, so I'm at the sewing machine and the first thing is to make sure you have the right needle in your machine. I am using um, fleece needles. Schmetz makes needles specifically for sewing fleece. You do not have to get these needles if you don't want to, but it's probably better if you sew with a ballpoint needle. So knit needles would work and I would go with a thicker one. I'm gonna be sewing with a 9014 size needle and um, it's gonna be a little bit thicker because once we hit those corners, it's, it's gonna be a little bit dense with the fleece. Now, the reason you wanna use a ballpoint needle is because this is kind of 
like a knit fabric there is a stretch to one direction in it and by using a ballpoint needle it's not going to break those little threads um, it's just going to go between them so added bonus of using a ballpoint needle um, you can use a knit needle or you can use a fleece needle totally up to you but make sure you have the right needle in and i'd recommend like an 80 or 90. Um, i'm just going with 90 because that's what's in this pack so next step is going to be to set your machine for a zigzag stitch. So I have my machine on a zigzag stitch and then you have to adjust the length and the width. Now I'm sewing on the max length and width. So on my Bernina, that's a five in both directions. If you're using a brother machine, I believe the max width is a four. Um, I mean, a max length is a four. I think it's four on both of them. So just go to whatever the max is for you. Um, if you're not clear about, you know, if you're using just standard fleece, this should work. It's a good size zigzag stitch. Um, it's gonna catch everything. It looks nice and neat when it's finished and it's not gonna jam up. If you want to use a smaller zigzag stitch, you totally can, but I'm gonna be recommending this one because it's what I've been working with and I did try some different um, length and width combinations to get the right one to do this project. So next we are going to be sewing at a half inch. Now you may be thinking, well, why do we fold it at five eighths and sewing it at half? You want to make sure that this edge gets caught. Um, if you fold it at a half inch and sew it at a half inch, your zigzag, if you don't have everything lined up perfectly, may not catch this edge. And that's the whole point of doing this is to fold this edge over and to hold it in place. And because this is a blanket, you want something that's gonna be pretty resilient to throw in the wash. You don't want it falling apart and your side seams coming off because you didn't sew it right or because you didn't catch that edge. So this is my solution for this problem. We folded it five eighths. We're gonna sew it at a half inch mark. So you're gonna line up the outside edge of your fabric with the half inch, and then we're going to get the presser foot all lined up. Let's go in for a closer look. All right, so we're in for a close up, and I have my um, seam measuring device um, attached to the half inch mark. So um, if your half inch mark is hard to see or because we're using fleece, it's kind of fluffy, it's easier to use one of these gauges. It's just a, a seam gauge, it's magnetic, it's pretty tight. So you can get these on Amazon, it's like two for $5. And you're just gonna line it up on that half inch mark. I'm just gonna show you how it's a half inch. So from the center mark of the presser foot to this edge is a half inch. And we are going to get our fabric all lined up. And as you can see, we're going to have this edge, it's going to be on the inside of the presser foot. So that's how we're gonna make sure we catch that zigzag stitch and it will catch both sides and then go back in and we'll have a nice even edge here. This will all be caught and then we will not have any problems after this is washed. So I'm gonna roll my needle down to get started. And then I'm just going to take a stitch or two and I'm gonna pull this pin out because it's totally in the way. And I am gonna back stitch just like two stitches and then start going forward again. And because fleece is kind of fluffy, you may wanna just keep a finger here to press it down um, to keep everything lined up. It does kind of wanna roll on itself a little bit. And if you are sewing on a tabletop and you have, you know, this fleece is 60 inches wide and it's a yard and a half long. It's easier if you lay everything out across a long table once you get sewing. So that way it doesn't pull and fall in your lap and be fighting against you while you're trying to sew. So we're just gonna follow along this line and it's pretty straightforward. So now we're just coming down towards the other end, removing that last, second to last pin. And we are just going to keep stitching out that very last pin. And then once we get to the other end, we are gonna back stitch just to hold that in place. And then move forward, left that presser foot. And then you can see we've got a nice zigzag stitch, it's caught that edge under there, and then from the front side, you just have a really pretty 
nice, neat zigzag stitch. Now, and it also has a little bit of stretch in it to go with the fabric because it is a zigzag stitch and that's what they do. Now, if you think this is a little bit too big, let me zoom in a little, there we go. If you think that the zigzag is a little bit too big and you're like, yeah, I don't really want it that big, you can adjust your machine and go down to a four in each direction. Um, that'll make it a little bit shorter and a little bit tighter but it might be a little bit harder to sew depending on the thickness of your fleece. This is polar fleece. I think you could definitely go down to four if you wanted to. Um, I kind of like the way five looks, so I'm gonna stick with that. But totally up to you once you start sewing. Let's move on to the other side and then we'll go on to the next step. Once you've got both of the sides sewn under and the next step is going to be to finish the top and the bottom edges. Now to do this, we're going to fold the top edge the same amount of the 5 eighths as before, but we are going to fold in the corner of the seam so that we kind of have a nice squared off um, finish once we sew that top and bottom seam. And so we're working with this top edge now and we're still gonna be folding it over 5 eighths of an inch. So it's gonna be the same as before. The only difference is, is at the very, very top up here in this corner, we're gonna fold that as part of the fold down process. So you're just basically taking that top corner, folding it towards the seam you just stitched, and then we're gonna fold the fabric across the top down 5 eighths of an inch. So let me just get that to the right length. So once you go in, you're gonna do that at 5 eighths of an inch. You're gonna have this nice folded over corner over here, and we're gonna sew that stitch line in the same place so you will have a finished corner. You can put in a pin to hold that in place. Make sure you catch the bottom of it. Oops, I didn't do it that time. Okay, one more time. Catch it so that it holds that corner in place. And then we're just gonna move down across the top edge of the rest of the fabric and fold it over 5 eighths of an inch, just like we did with the sides. And we're gonna repeat this process on the bottom edge as well. So just keep going down and spacing out the pins. I'm gonna jump over to the other corner so we can fold that one down. So same thing, you're taking this corner, you're folding it towards the inside of the seam and then you're gonna fold that top part down to 5 eighths of an inch. Where's my seam gauge? It's in here somewhere. There it is. Um, so it's going to be 5 eighths of an inch and then you have this nice neat little corner over here put in a pin to hold that in place, and then continue back across the whole top edge. So it's all 5 eighths. And you're gonna do the exact same thing on the bottom. And then we're gonna head back to the sewing machine. So I'm back at the sewing machine and all of my settings are staying the same. I still have the length and the width at five and we are still going to be sewing at that half an inch. So I'm gonna line up the outside edge of my fabric with my um, seam marker and I'm going to put my presser foot down and then roll in my needle. Let's go in for a closer look. I have my needle down in my fabric and it is just a little bit past that folded triangle edge. And I'm gonna pull that pin out because it's kind of in the way. There we go. Okay, so I am just going to start stitching and just the same as before, um, I'm gonna back stitch and then go forward again. And I am pushing down on this edge of the fabric because it kind of puffs up and it wants to roll a little bit. So I'm just kind of holding that in place so it stays at that half inch mark. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. Oops. Sorry about that. So you can just see this a little bit better. It's exactly the same as before. I have my fabric spread out and um, part of it is on my lap just to keep it from falling off the table. And we are just going to be sewing across this top, removing each pin as we get to it. Now 
now we're coming to the other end. Just remove some of these last pins. And or take that last pin out. Hold the edge of the triangle so that you can keep that all in place while you sew over it. And then we are gonna backstitch and then finish that out. So lift up your presser foot and you can take a look. Nice stitched lines. You can have a nice looking neat corner. We're gonna trim these off so those aren't hanging out. But that is basically how you're gonna finish your blanket. So just complete the bottom edge the exact same way and then you're gonna be done. So now you know how to make a super easy fleece blanket. Following these steps, you'll have a blanket ready to go in 30 minutes or less, and it will be neat and tidy, hold up in the wash, and pretty much do everything you want a blanket to do. Plus it's super soft and fuzzy, which is always nice. If you are going to make them for an adult, I would go with two yards of fabric. Um, this is a kid size, it's a yard and a half, as I explained before. If you wanted to do it a little bit smaller, you could always do a yard as well. And then pets, let's go less than a yard, uh, depending on the size of your pet. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a stitch. And if you've got questions, but no one to answer them, head on over to Let's Talk Sewing for Beginners hosted by Sew Sew Lounge. It's an interactive Facebook group where you can ask all the questions you want and I will get you some answers. I go live in the group once a month, so check the events for the schedule. Until we meet again, happy sewing! Music